Gossip, gossip, and more gossip. Get the inside dish on superstars, hot couples, big winners, and big losers. Headline players who get more than their 15 minutes in the fame game. We've got a panel of world-class gossips, folks who raise dishing to an art form right now. Well, it's time to uh, dish a little bit. No, let's dish a lot tonight on the program. Our Corey Hay lives and works in the glamorous world of New York's elite. He is a society columnist for Manhattan File, and our Corey Hay is with us right now. How you doing, Corey? I'm fine, Mike. How are you? F feeling good. Best night of my life. This okay. is going to be fun. Let's go. Uh, you know Heather Hart. Heather Hart is a celebrity journalist who joins us from Hollywood. She covers the L.A. scene and has appeared on E! Entertainment Television, American Journal, Inside Edition, and... Geraldo, I've heard of him. Hi, Heather. Hi, how are you? Well, you look great. Thank you. Uh huh. And Tony you... Frost is the editor of Globe, a top tabloid known for breaking exclusives <laughs> on the rich, famous, and the infamous as well. Tony's been with us many times. Tony, good to see you again. Good evening, Mike. Hey, you look good, too. Uh, it's been sunny down here today, Mike. Yeah, you got a little bit of a tan going on there. <laughs> I am the whitest bad. man alive. I never get any sun, and I should. You know, it's bad for me. What difference does that make? Let's talk about famous people and do some dishing now. I got to start with Pamela Lee Anderson because she's so much in the news along with her, well, soon to be ex husband, Tommy Lee. Come on, Corey, give me some dirt. Well, let's just get rid of the name Lee to start with. And really, the truth is, it almost cost her the show. His image was tattoos and piercing and recreational things I'm not going to talk about here on a family show. And she was lucky to choose her baby keep her show and dump him. So what do you mean that she was going to lose the show? Well, the producers and the directors Baywatch, of and course. the people watching over the show were very concerned about the downgrading of the image of Pamela Lee Anderson because of that fight outside the Viper Club. I mean, he's really a heavy-duty party boy. He's flying high, and he was taking her with her with him. You know, last night we talked about this a little bit. What is What does this guy have, this uh, Tommy Lee? Is it Heather... Uh Heather Locklear, Locklear, of course, he was married to her. And There's Pamela a lot Lee. of fascination between rock and roll and models and celebrities and actors. I think it's when they're little girls and they look up and, and identify with that music. I'm not sure uh, what else he has, although I understand there are videotapes and photos of everything he's got and what she's got, too. Look you out. know what, Mike? Yes, Heather. Um, it's not just the fact that he flies into rages and wrecks her trailer and assaults people who are paying too much attention to her in clubs, but it's also he, he was starting to have an impact on her work. She had a scene with David Chokichi where he was her, his character was supposed to propose to her, and she um, uh, he said that there was a love scene afterwards that she just absolutely could not do. He was mad as hell, and he just didn't allow her to do it. And afterwards, she just had to like get proposed to and sort of pat each other on the shoulder and sort of like give a little pecks instead of having that great love so scene. So a very jealous guy. Very yeah, jealous. But he and is it's impacting her work. Mm -hmm. But basically, he's been sleeping with everyone in sight for months. Ever oh, since she got pregnant, he went back out and was taking every groupie he could find. He was cheating on her. She found out. She said, no, I'm not going to put up with this. Tony, what do you hear? Well, uh, uh, Curry's, uh, Curry's absolutely right, uh, Mike. Uh, he was cheating. And that's uh, the Globe page one headline next week. Uh, <laughs> Pam, Pam caught Tommy Lee cheating. She caught him in bed with another woman. Now, Heather, I want to get a female's perspective here. What is it about him that is, uh, well, attractive to some women? Well, to a woman like Pamela Lee, I mean Pamela Anderson, um, there's, like, like Corey said, there's this rocker image. She was very impetuous marrying him after only four days of knowing him. It was a bit ridiculous, and she would be foolish to go back to him, but she was foolish to go out with him in the first place and to marry him. And I'm really, really sorry for Brandon, their child, yeah. you know, five months old, six months old at this point. And, and, and there goes that marriage. And, and, and he's been, I've, I've heard that when she threatened to leave him, he came home into their home in Malibu wielding a shotgun. So that really frightened her Boy, as well. Dangerous, dangerous situation. But at the it same is. time, it had boosted her image onto the front pages. It raised her level of uh, obviousness, even ob more obvious. I mean, it did give her a certain new amount of fame and kind of like, you know, a little bit of extra added glamour, even though it was a little seedy, but I think she can pull out of this and get back up on top so of the beach. So who do you think might be next for uh, Tommy Lee? Well, uh, I know who might be next for um, Pamela Lee. Oh, really? Well, she, well, I've heard that she's been seen with her ex, John Peters, out and about here in Los Angeles, so maybe she's going to him for solace. I'm not sure. The movie mogul. Yes. John Peters, who used to be Barbara with Barbara Streisand. Streisand. That's right. Well, how old is he now? 
He's up there. He must be, he <laughs> must be in his 50s, it. isn't he? He's up there, yeah. But he was dating Vendela, and he's been dating all kinds of beautiful women his whole she career. She probably needs her hair done again. And <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't, uh, the person that uh, comes to mind in the office today, we're talking about this, Tori Spelling might be next for uh, Tommy Lee. Seems like, you know, in that I don't pattern. think Daddy would let that well, happen. Well, can you imagine I a really scandal don't. there? Way. Wow, Aaron Spelling standing for that. Uh, let's get into uh, Michael Jackson just a little bit here. Uh, in the news a lot, uh, of course, with his marriage recently to Debbie Rowe. Tell me more about who Debbie is. Well, it doesn't really matter who Debbie is. <laughs> Debbie's the father of Michael's baby. And I remember when they sat her, the other panelists, and said, 500,000, Corey. I said, five to seven million. And you know what? The price is climbing. If he thinks he's going to buy this baby and walk away with it, He's out of his mind. You're going to see those two in court eventually. No court in the world is going to give that baby to Michael Jackson alone. And as long as she's got that baby and she's the mother, she's going to be on that payroll. Or he, she's going to get him. She'll know secrets that I don't even want to well, get Well, Globe certainly has had uh, dis dispersed a lot of secrets about Michael Jackson. What do you have this week? Well, we've got uh, a 15.3 nut that uh, Michael uh, made, made Debbie agree to. 15.3? A 15-point prenup that uh, he made her agree to. And there's some interesting clauses in this. Uh, two of the most interesting are that he said that she must never mention the name Lisa Marie Presley or play any Elvis Presley records in the house. You've made these up, Tony. <laughs> no, no, no. These are from genuine sources very close to um, Michael Jackson. And we've been right on this story all the way. And another one is that he insists that, uh, that Debbie treats Liz Taylor with, with respect. Mm -hmm. now, well, I, sorry, Nick. Go ahead, Heather. Go ahead. Um, there is also uh, one of the other tabloids, not yours, Tony, is going to come out tomorrow with a story that Debbie Rowe is a lesbian. Um, I don't know <laughs> what they're basing this on. They've apparently spoken to people. I think, and I think they're, they're both lesbians. <laughs> I well, think they're basing right. it on her sort of cussing and drinking and motorcycle driving and leather wearing sort of. Well, now she's a dental hygienist, I thought. She is, but she has these. Uh, she has. She's. A, she's a drinker. She's a motorbike rider. She's a leather wearer. So she has a um, biker side to. She her. has a biker side to her. However, I've spoken to a lot of people who know her friends here, and they just say she's a wonderful woman. They have nothing but wonderful things to say about her, and they say that the marriage proposal came as a complete surprise to her, despite the fact that there probably might be some money involved. Now, but the proposal was uh, a surprise. Tony, was it Globe that says that his, the the three of the, the two of them were involved in in three way sex? Now, what Is happened, you, uh, Debbie and her boyfriend used to drive to Neverland, and they would sleep the night uh, with Michael at Neverland, with Debbie between, between Michael and her boyfriend. How old there, is the boyfriend? There was no three-way sex there. <laughs> How old is the boyfriend? And I'm the, the, curious. The, the interesting thing is that most of the sources we speak to still insist that Michael Jackson didn't do it that it was artificial insemination. I back and that this up. Was That's out. what I'm hearing, too. That's what I'm hearing all, all the over the place. Can you imagine Michael Jackson doing that with Never. her? <laughs> Never. I, Never. I, I want to see that picture, Tony. <laughs> That's the picture. That's I'll right. pay for that. Well, coming up next, it's another British invasion. We'll talk about the royals, Fergie and Diana, when we come back. We are back playing the fame game, finding out which superstars are in and who's out in the world of celebrity gossip. Our Corey Hay, celebrity columnist for Manhattan File, is with us in the studio. In Los Angeles, Heather Hart, who has the inside scoop on Hollywood, uh, the legends and the losers out there. And joining us from Florida, tabloid titan Tony Frost, editor of Globe. And we just saw a picture there on the bump back in of uh, Fergie, who's been really making the rounds on television shows. Yeah. Uh, apparently on, I didn't see this, but uh, a couple of our producers did, when she was on with Larry King. Oh, did, yeah. you, did anybody see that? Yes, I did, yes. What would you think? I heard I there was a lot of flirting uh, going on. Well, it's incredible, Mike. Uh, Diane Sawyer, Oprah, Larry King. The thing about Oprah, uh, the thing about Fergie is she's starstruck, she's awestruck, she's in awe of these people. And if Larry King had said to her, jump on my table and tap dance while singing God Save the Queen, she would have done. I would have watched that, actually. That would be kind of She's a great saleswoman, and she's got to hawk anything she's got to make a living. The truth is the palace has cut her off, she needs to make a buck, she's got two kids to support, and she's a shopaholic. But I'll tell you this, uh, I feel sorry for her. I read her book, and I read uh, some of the uh, other more tabloidy books about well, her life. It worked, Mike, because she wants people to feel sorry for yeah. her. Yeah, well, then it worked on me, because I kind of do. But another thing I would say is that I don't get it. I'm one of those people that I just don't understand why there's a fascination with the royals at all. I just don't care Well, with Diana, them. I understand well, uh, it. It's, it's very simple, Mike, that uh, in, in, in England, we don't have... Uh, Clint Eastwood, Oprah Winfrey, um, they're, 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 they're the American royalty. Uh, we, we have our own royalty, and, and, well, and that's the queen. Well, you know, and Clint Eastwood Charles. and Oprah, you know, they've worked their way up from, uh, you know, 
they've come up with their own dreams in life, a, and they've achieved those dreams. But the royals, yeah. to me, are just people who just happen to be born into the right family. But Fergie was a commoner. Fergie True, but she stumbled into a guy that uh, yeah, married so her. That's, so a, that's, right. what a, it's that's a dream. It's soap <laughs> opera that's been imported, much like American musicals are imported to Britain and uh, certain French movies are imported to America. It, I remember working very hard to get the tabloids in America to actually write about the royals. I remember when I was the columnist for the Inquirer, Mr. Pope, who was the publisher then, would not write about the royals or the mafia. I had gotten to go to the royals, and the mafia still isn't being written about, but uh, I think the royals are fun, and they're yeah. getting so crazy. And yeah. Well, well I should shut up, because everybody loves it. And Diane's coming I mean, back to New York. Yeah. I'm having Gerald in two weeks oh, yeah? at the Metropolitan Museum's Costume Institute, and that's where Sharon Stone and Prince Stanley will meet, and that'll be a photo op that I'm sure Tony will... Uh, very cool. Well, Heather, um, uh, tell, me, uh, tell me why I should be interested in the Royals or why well, the country is fascinated. Look at the material they're giving us. I mean, the, here's Fergie going on all the talk shows saying that she has took, she took these pills when she was 16, these diet pills. She took them for only four days, but she says they altered her personality, and that's why today she acts in such a bizarre manner sometimes. Now, that's weird stuff. The other thing like is, the, the, maybe I just say one more thing. Uh -huh. She, she um, said that the toe-sucking incident with John Bryan wasn't really a toe-sucking incident at all, but that they were really playing Cinderella. Oh, that's much better. That's not weird. I mean, they were playing Cinderella. But it's what? But great you know, material. Heather, haven't you ever, haven't you ever toe-sucked? I mean, why is yeah. toe-sucking such a big deal? During having sex or playing around with people, does, are you making it everybody here, Mike? Because when well, who wouldn't? I mean, you kiss up about, uh, around on people's body. What am I getting into? What are you saying? Wait, 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 so what? Kissing toe somebody's sucking, feet, Mike, big deal. Tell us, you confess. know, Mike, he Heather's oh, absolutely right about t how much material the royals have provided. I can remember going back 15 years when I was chief reporter for a newspaper in Britain called the Sunday Mirror. I signed up Princess Diana's hairdresser. And he told me riveting information, riveting gossip that Diana was not an actual blonde and how she would ring up her favorite disc jockey on a London radio station and use a code name to request her favorite songs. Fast forward 15 years, the tell-alls now about the royals are, as Heather and, and Corey said, they're about royals taking slimming pills, they're about royals having sex, their orgasms. Every piece of mystique has been stripped from the royal family by Diane Fergie's um, outrageous antics. It goes back to the everybody likes a fairy tale. Yeah. And it's about Cinderella. It's about My Fair Lady. And it's a living, live fairy tale. And the truth is, it's not scripted. It's not directed. It's not Baywatch. It's real life. And that makes it even more interesting. And most people don't live that kind of fast pace, It's a real fast life spending, soap opera. Crazy yeah. lives. And we like to see that yeah. the, the, these royal fairy tale people are yeah. like uh, like us. The queen took a drink after she heard about Togi's to, 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 to Fergie's toe sucking incident. So, uh, <laughs> she did more than a drink. Togi's fur sucking, fur -sucking incident. incident. That would have been great. Oh, well, <laughs> the, point is, the, point, the point is, Mike, it was a fairy tale. It's no longer a fairy tale. It's a nightmare. Right. Yeah. Right. Hey, this just in today over the wires. Uh, Queen orders Diana's name struck from Anglican uh, prayers. Uh, Diana's name has been removed from the Church of England's prayer for the royal family because well, I think, she I is think divorced that, from the heir I, to the throne. Mike, I think that the Queen and Prince Charles have been praying for some time that they never hear the name Diana mentioned again. This is a, this is a positive step towards that happening for I'm them. sure she's relieved, too. So in the palace, they probably think, see, you shouldn't mess around with those commoners. Well, you have to remember one thing. Her children have both promised her, especially the future king, money. When I'm king, the HRH will be restored to your name. Don't forget, her children, one or the other, maybe both, will one day be king of England, and then th they'll have the final word. Not the queen, not Charles, but her son. So what's going to happen with Fergie and Di? Are they both going to come to the States? Absolutely. They're coming all the time. Fergie just left. Diana's on her way. They come here as much as they can. They can't really move here because the queen has said, go there, lose the children. They actually have laws over there that the children belong to the head of state. Mm -hmm. Therefore, and there's a lot of control exerted by the palace. Heather? They can't and just leave. Sorry, and despite the paparazzi here and what we think is just awful, you should see London. They're ten times worse than us. You know, they're all over these people. These people, they've ruined their lives. Yeah. So they're comfortable here. We, we give them the respect that they deserve here. Hey, is Larry King married? Is he married? No, he's, he's been not. married so many no. times we don't even know. He's well, not, not right, right now. now. He's what not time is engaged now? often? Yeah. Kind of like yeah. Sharon Stone. You know, like hard to keep track. Who's your boyfriend? Well, what time is it? <laughs> he was described to me as a serial divorcee. Right. <laughs> so well, you never know. Maybe, it. maybe these two could uh, hook up down the road. Fergie, Fergie, and, Fergie and Larry. Larry. Hey, maybe come Fergie on. And I think, if, uh, I think if, Larry, if Larry had proposed marriage, marriage the other night in front of a national TV audience, Fergie would have accepted. Wow. 
Well, she's a key player in the fame game. She is Madonna. We'll talk about her when we come back. Back with the fame game. Gossip about your favorite stars, what they're doing and who they're doing it with. Our Corey Hay is here. Heather Hart is in L.A. and Tony Frost is down in Florida. Okay, next up is uh, Madonna. I just saw a picture of there. Uh, Carlos Leon is the father of her baby, and apparently he just picked up three more episodes on Nash Bridges. Who wants to start with Madonna? Yeah, I'll start that's... with her. I'll oh, oh, Tony, pipe in first. Go ahead, Tony. Uh, uh, Tony. You're up. Well, I think it's, it's a good move. It's a good bit of creative casting there. I mean, he plays, uh, he'll play Freddy, a, a guy who details cars in Nash Bridges. Now, that doesn't require uh, Laurence Olivier talents. I mean, it's a good little role for him. And uh, if, if he's a success, then the show has got Mr. Madonna. And if he fails, then, well, he'll just disappear. But uh, it's no big deal. Yeah, but nice but piece of publicity. Where, where it's good, Mike, is that, uh, is that Madonna uh, can take some pride in this, that he's no longer just her sperm donor. He's a guy who's out working, earning a living, and uh, won't be a deadbeat dad. Well, and wait a minute. She basically told him to get out of the house. Gets him out She's of the house. She's not going to breastfeed him. Time, oh, I thought it, they were together. They're together, but when I was in Buenos Aires doing the first interview with Madonna, he came down, they had this vicious fight in the hotel. She basically told him to take a hike, and he was gone for 48 hours. Uh, basically, he did just father this baby. I think she likes him, and I know he likes her, but who do you think wears the pants here? Who's giving the orders? Who's got the money? Who's in control? Okay, Not Michael Jackson. It's Madonna. <laughs> Heather? Okay, but now that the baby is born, I think she's happy to have him nearby, and he's moved from the west coast, uh, the east coast now, to Los Angeles. And I know some agents here who receive faxes from him, soliciting them and their celebrity clients as clients for his workout uh, uh, business. Well, he certainly a, is a trainer. handsome guy, a very fit guy. Does anybody know anything about his acting ability yet? Not yet. Nil. We'll find out well, soon. Well, we don't know that for sure. I right? know it for sure. Oh, how do you know I, that? Because I know because Madonna was complaining to all her girlfriends. But he was a little boring in bed. She would always give him instruction and tell him what to do and how to do it. And he basically takes orders very well. I hear he's quite um, submissive. Oh, really? Well, he got the job done in a certain He sense. certainly did. Uh, Sharon Stone. Um, I know that she's trying to look for more meaningful work now, and she's go doing a film about uh, AIDS. Isn't that right? Yeah, she's doing The Normal Heart, which is a script that's been floating around Hollywood for 10 years. And Barbara Streisand was originally attached, and she was going to do it with Ray Fiennes. And now um, Sharon Stone, who at one point was really aggravating gay activists because she played a bisexual murderer on Basic Instinct, is the leading activist for AIDS uh, awareness in the country, basically. And she's doing this Normal Heart, which is about the um, organization of the gay uh, men's health crisis organization. It was, a, it was based on a wonderful play by my friend Larry Kramer, right. and it has caused a lot of controversy because it hasn't been made. Barbara Streisand promised to make it, right. and she just didn't. And I'm glad that Sharon is sees the opportunity to get the gay ticket buyers behind her and she is a very active uh, performer and, and she knows about safe sex I mean she has no babies she has more lovers than Madonna and I'm just glad she says wear a condom okay and this fine. is really a mea culpa to her mentor and teacher who died of AIDS it's her it's her tribute to him I think because she's really into this now and she's you know gonna play a wheelchair um, ridden doctor it's gonna be an interesting role for she her. She wants the Oscar. Now Corey you mentioned she Barbara definitely. Streisand somebody that I want to talk about tonight because she's been uh, making a lot of the rounds too promoting her film The Face Has Two Mirrors right? What Tony she needs to do is have her face done. She should go to Dr. Thomas Romo yeah. the head of facial plastic surgery for Lenox Hill and get that nose done. She's had everything else done and she really does crack the mirror. She's so insecure about the way she looks why didn't she just go into the hospital, let him break that nose? She and wouldn't be Barbara off. Streisand without that nose, though. Yeah, but that she's so insecure. Well, uh, she moved the entire good. paparazzi around the opening of her film to one side of the theater so they'd only get one side. I mean, she's just freaky about it. Mike, we've yeah. got a very good uh, Barbara Streisand story on page one of the Globe next week. <laughs> oh, you do. I'm shocked. And uh, our headline is Streisand's fiance in nude photo scandal. What? And uh, we James have Brolin. Yep, we have these pictures of James Brolin oh, taken God. while in 1994 while he was making a movie called Indecent Exposure 2. Now, this wasn't a porn movie. It was described as, as an erotic thriller. And uh, we have these pictures taken between, shoot, between scenes where he's walking around in his birthday suit and seems to be very comfortable in it with an actress called Shannon Tweed, a former Playboy oh, sure. playmate. Yeah. And uh, we put inquiries into Mr. Brolin's agent about, about this. And within 24 hours, James, who is on uh, a shoot in Ireland, called the Globe office to uh, protest that uh, it was sleazy or sordid. And uh, he uh, wanted to make the point that he felt very uncomfortable standing around in the nude. Now, 
the production assistants on the uh, sets uh, said that they, can see ex they could see and remember exactly what it is that Barbara Streisand sees in, uh, mm. in James Berlin. And I, I just I, had and dinner and with what you're talking about. Ago and, uh, it appears to be the same thing that Heather Locklear <laughs> and, uh, and Pam Anderson saw in Tommy Lee. So how many inches are you providing in the globe on this story? Well, we, we, we have to cut off at the crucial point because... Uh, oh, I meant copy. Uh, anyway, <laughs> Corey, what were you saying? You had dinner with these people? Uh, Sharon Tweed was just in town, and she's gone beyond soft, soft. She's done it all on camera, pretty much. She spreads it out and lays it out. And um, she said she had a really good time with James Brolin. James was afraid about Barbara's reaction. Let's face it, James Brolin, what kind of career does he really have? This is a career move with Barbara as well. Barbara can help you get to the top, and he, she still has a lot of power. Even this new movie is not going to crack the box office. It's really mushy, and it's just not up to par. I read an article, I gave a review thing, in the Mike, New York Times, that, I think, maybe uh, today, that said that it was basically a therapy session on film. But I haven't seen it yet, so I can't okay. say. Tony, go ahead. Right? No, think, a, month ago, a month ago, Globe uh, wrote on page one, published on page one, that Streisand would marry Berlin, and that very much seems the case today. because. Uh, in the Liz Smith column, uh, it was mentioned that she had said that may well happen. That's right. He seems like a very nice man, very handsome man, very fit man. He also has, uh, Heather, can you help me out there with, in Hollywood? Sure. Does, isn't his son quite a, the up-and-comer? Um, I don't know anything about his son. I just know what, that, that what Tony just said is true, that um, uh, Barbara has told friends here that she thinks this is it. She's ready to settle down, and she thinks James is the She's one. I don't know much about his son. She's desperately insecure, and it's about time she went down the line to the altar. Okay, well, coming up next here on The Fame Game, uh, Frank Sinatra, old blue eyes, battles for his health as his family battles for his wealth. We'll talk about Frank Sinatra when we come back. Back with our Corey Hay, Heather Hart, and Tony Frost. Let's talk about Frank Sinatra just a little bit. Uh, Corey, what do you have on him? The guy's 80 years old. He's supposed to be in, in failing health. How, how He's got a wonderful, loving family behind him. He's 80 years old, and he's a little queasy right now. He's been having some trouble for quite some time since he fell off that stage. But Barbara Sinatra's taking really good care of him. He's got supportive daughters. Um, but Barbara really is the guardian of Frank Sinatra's mental, emotional, and mental health. And he's lucky to have her. Heather? And she's got to walk away with every dime he's got. Okay, it, 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 it wasn't a pinched nerve, by the way. I know everybody probably knows that by now. But it was definitely a mild heart attack. Um, it was much more serious than the press led on, or that Frank Sinatra's people led on. And um, it was a mild heart attack, and he had a bad case of pneumonia. And he wasn't recognizing people when they were coming in to see him. And you're right, Corey, Barbara was the only person he could sort of connect to and relate to. Tony, how about you? Do you agree that uh, Barbara definitely is the person who's going to get uh, all of the money? No, not at all. Um, he's, got, uh, he's got his children to think about. Um, uh, there is bad blood, of course, between the daughters and Barbara. They disapprove of the way that they perceive she's controlling his life. But Corey's quite right that uh, Barbara is Frank's guardian an angel. Uh, they have reached a truce during this period of uh, Sinatra's very bad health where they are doing their best to support him and the bitterness has not come to the surface wh while they're with him. But behind the scenes, the daughters are very unhappy with uh, the way they, they think Barbara has uh, controlled him. And at one, point, at one point, Barbara did want, her, uh, did want Frank to, to adopt her son, her grown-up son. Bobby the Marks, who's a clear lawyer. Implication, the clear implication being that she wanted him to have a piece of uh, the Sinatra estate. Uh, uh, listen, we can't do a fame game show. We're running out of time here without talking about JFK Jr. and his wife, Cor uh, Carolyn. Now, uh, things I heard is that Carolyn basically is staying home a lot and being groomed to be a first lady. Is that what you hear, Corey? Well, they've been telling her just to be quiet basically, and she's basically now trapped in a gilded cage. Now, I had dinner with Jack and Carolyn Bissett at the Whitney Museum recently, and she's got her head down, she's flipping her hair, she's nervous. He's still that gregarious, outgoing guy. Basically, she's been told not to talk too much, and she's trapped more and more in a gilded cage. She's afraid to go out of the apartment right now. They have people standing outside the door waiting for her to come out. They follow her, they want to talk to her, and basically, she's not ready to talk because Ted Kennedy has told her not to. When you were here a few weeks ago, you said that you thought she was pregnant. I know she's pregnant. Okay. I've heard that Excuse too. Excuse me. Heather, yes? I've heard that too. I, I, I want to just say, though, that she's a PR whiz and she um, will manage to, to, to get out of this slump. And when, when she does um, take on the public, she will be a genius at it, I think. I think it's time that we had someone young, someone fresh. It's enough already with Jackie O. I, it's my generation's turn to have somebody they can 
dress like and look up to and dye their hair like. Um, she, I think she's really cool. Hey, you, you do like her, Heather? I think she's totally cool. Uh, yeah, you do. Like, and why do you like her? Because of her style? I like her style. I like her, her, her youth. I'm, we, we're, we're still stuck in the 50s with this whole Jackie Ola. Yeah. It's time for something new. She's very fresh. He's gorgeous. They're a great couple. I'd be up for that. To hey, hey, Tony, you're a publisher uh, with Globe. What about George? I hear it's on Thin Ice, his magazine. Well, um, personally, uh, there's not much in it that would make me buy, uh, buy it, but uh, it does have a lot of uh, Hachette money behind it, and uh, I think that uh, they'll keep it running for a little while yet. As long but as John is willing to go out and go sell the ads, the, uh, which is what he's doing, it'll run. Yeah. When he stops, it's over. Yeah. But she doesn't have anywhere near the magic that Jackie has, or for that matter, the magic that John has. Mm -hmm. uh, Got to go here real quick, but uh, Sandra Bullock is a... Uh, I'm a big um. fan of her career. Uh, Heather, who is she with? Matthew well, McConaughey well, or yeah, Chris O'Donnell? Everybody's jumping down her throat saying, oh, oh, she's with uh, Matthew McConaughey just because she showed up in Washington where he's shooting Contact with Jodie Foster. However, a couple of months ago when she was shooting in Love and War in Montreal, they were seen at a club called the Salvios. It's a trendy club there, and they were making out, her and Chris O'Donnell. So give her a break. She's dating a couple of people. She, it's not a fairy tale romance with Matthew McConaughey by any means because she definitely was seeing Chris O'Donnell just very shortly. Did she so. ever make a movie with Chris O'Donnell? Yeah, she was making In Love and War in oh, Canada so with him. That, and yeah. that's when they sort of got together. I was at Pravda not a month ago when Matthew McConaughey had a beautiful blonde on his lap and it was not Sandra Bullock. There you go. And she was all over him and he was all over her. They're playing the field, exactly. Why not? They're and not married. Why not? I agree. My goodness why not let him have some fun? I agree. It's not like Jack Nichols and beating up hookers and we didn't so even talk about so Jack on. Nicholson, did we? Let's slip in some information about him real quick. He's being sued, right? Yeah. He certainly is being sued. I know that right now his <laughs> private eye, Frank Money, who's to save him from all of his troubles, has got him in court. He owes him $50,000. What's the allegation? The allegation, there are several allegations. One, that he beat up a prostitute in L.A. And uh, the other she, one... Because he didn't pay. He didn't pay her, and he beat her up badly. Very he burst, badly. He and the other voice. problem is, of course, you remember he got that ex-wife, the mother of the baby yep. whose house he's trying Heather, to Heather, what did you say real quick? He, he had busted a breast implant yeah. on this prostitute. That's correct. You see, yeah. you see Mike, that the, the stories of Jack Nicholson entertaining these ladies of the night have been, a, have been around for years and years and years. We've all known about them. Right. But the thing is that Jack feels that he's in such an exalted position that he can be serviced for free. The, uh, the rub here seems to be that one of these gals asked him to pay. Oh, th Tony, thank you very much, and Heather, thank you very thank much, you. and Corey, always fun here on the Fame Game. Is that a Hollywood uh, headline or not? You busted my breast implant. <laughs> and he did. Mm. Coming right back with... Uh